Hey, are you ready to change your life? If the answer is yes, there's only one rule. You have to change your mind first. And my friend, there's a place where the neuroscience of how your mind works smashes together with faith and everything starts to make sense. That place is called self-brain surgery. You can learn it and it will help you become healthier, feel better, and be happier. And the good news is you can start today. Thanks, Lisa. Hey, so glad to have you listening today. I'm Dr. Lee Warren, and I live in Nebraska in the United States of America with my incredible wife, Lisa, my father-in-law, Tata, and the super pups, Harvey and Lewis. I'm a neurosurgeon and an author, and I'm here to help you harness neuroscience, the power of your brain, faith, the power of your spirit, and good old common sense to help you lead a healthier, better, happier life. Listen, friend, you can't change your life until you change your mind, and I'm here to help you learn the art of self-brain surgery to get it done if you'd like the show. Please subscribe so you never miss an episode and tell your friends about it. If you tell two or three friends this podcast was helpful to you, imagine how much good we can all do around the world together. I'm Dr. Lee Warren, and I'm here to help you change your mind so you can change your life. Let's get after it. July the 4th, which in the United States is called Independence Day. It's the day that we celebrate our independence from Great Britain that we ended up fighting the Revolutionary War over back in 1776 through 1783. That independence was earned with the heroism and blood of the earliest Americans. And the men who wrote the Declaration of Independence and framed our Constitution, they pledged their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor to establish this nation on the basis of freedom. And now, 200 years later, 240 some odd years later, I want to encourage you, my friend, no matter where you live, to embrace freedom. It is critical that you embrace freedom freedom in your life. The founders of the United States of America knew that freedom wouldn't come easily. In fact, they knew that they would have to fight for it, that they'd have to go to war for it, and that some of them would give their lives for it. It's amazing. You should Google that. There's a list of all the people who signed the Declaration of Independence and all the things that happened to them and their families. And for many of them, they gave everything. They they died poor or they were imprisoned or they were hanged. Their families were harassed. It was a big deal for those folks, and almost none of them came through it and ended up unscathed for having to fight for their freedom. But it was worth it to them because being free was essential to them. They knew they couldn't continue any longer, not one more day, to live under the oppression of the British king. They had to make a change. And I'm bringing this to you because today, perhaps there's some area of your life in which you need freedom, friend. Maybe there's something that you just can't take anymore. You've got to make a change, and you know it. And the good news for you is the science is on your side. I've got several declarations that you could make today, and each one has something potentially transformative that you could use to break through in your life. And I think they'll find this is a useful exercise. If you're depressed, for example, if you have trouble with your emotional and mental state. You can actually take control of your thoughts. We've been talking about this for weeks and this infinitely happier idea. You have the power and the freedom to perform self-brain surgery, if you will, to control your neurochemistry, so to speak. You can speak life into your own mind. You can make it better. You can focus on gratitude. You can focus on controlling negative thoughts. And as we've been talking about episode after episode after episode, you can actually improve the neurochemical environment and balance of the neurotransmitters in your brain and make things feel better. The research is overwhelmingly clear that the biggest secret to feeling better, whether you need professional help or not, the biggest secret to getting better is to decide that you want to feel better and to start behaving as if you already do feel better because emotion follows motion. You've got to move. You've got to take some action. If that's picking up the phone and calling a counselor or a therapist or going to the doctor or if it's talking to somebody, as if it's journaling, if it's deciding that you're going to change some radical aspect of your life that's holding you back and keeping you depressed, the biggest decision is that you are deciding that you want to be free from that prison of depression or anxiety or fear or whatever emotional state it is. Emotion follows motion. And deciding, declaring, if you will, like the founders did, that you're going to fight this thing and you're going to break free from it is the key to getting it done. You've got to make that declaration in your life. I promise, if you start moving toward the place that you dream of being, 
soon after you'll notice, hey, I'm starting to feel better. Let's, let's take finances. If you're struggling financially, it is a scientific fact, friend. It sounds trite, but it's true. If you spend less money than you make, you'll end up having more money. That sounds silly, it's, but it's actually that simple. If today, if you declare that you will begin paying yourself first, before you pay anything else, before you buy stuff, before you do anything else, put some money away for yourself that's for you to keep. No matter how impossible it seems, if you can save 10% of what you earn, you will end up being financially free. It's not only doable, it's actually necessary if you're ever going to break the chains of financial dependency and financial struggle. You deserve to keep some of the money that you work so hard for. The science of finance declares that living on 90% or less of your income is the clear path to security and freedom from financial worry. There's no doubt about it. Remember, the founders of this country pledged their lives and their fortunes Imagine how the country would have fared if those early freedom seekers had been financially irresponsible in their earlier years. The reason they were able to start the Continental Army, the reason they were able to put the Congress together and do all the things that they did was because they were good stewards of their personal finances. When push comes to shove and you need to make some ha- something happen in your life, you've got to have some resources. And if you live outside your means, you can't ever have those resources and you're financially imperiled. They would have been forever imprisoned by the British if they hadn't had the resources through years and years of good financial stewardship to be able to spend that money when they needed to. They would have had no fortunes with which to help fund the fight for freedom if they hadn't been wise with their personal finances. And having savings creates that power for you to choose a different path for your own life. And that leads, my friend, to freedom. Remember a few weeks ago I said, if you can't say no to something that you want today so that you can have something you need tomorrow, you'll never be free. And this is part of the war. Delayed gratification leads to real gratification, the actual sweetness of financial freedom. If you're trapped in a body that isn't shaped the way you want or doesn't weigh the number of pounds that you want it to weigh, well, biochemistry promises that you can change that too. No matter what people say to you, friend, given the few exceptions of severe diabetes or some metabolic disorders, most of us can weigh less if we control what we put into our body and what we burn off through exercise. There's a biochemical actual fact that if you burn off 3,500 calories more than you take in over seven days, you will lose a pound of fat because your body has to turn on the engine that burns fat to get that energy. And it takes about 500 calories a day of deficit to get that engine turned on. That's why those ketone diets work, by the way. It's not a good long-term solution for most folks because most folks can't live on just ketone, uh, on just protein all the time. But the fact is, if you burn more than you take in, you will lose weight. So that takes some decisions, doesn't it? It takes some declarations. I am not going to put that bread. I have a friend who never eats bread, um, and she likes bread, but she really doesn't eat it because she doesn't want those calories. So she's making a declaration that that's one of the things she's going to trade because she wants to control what she puts in her body. And I'm always teasing her when we all, the four of us, always go out to lunch and she'll get French onion soup and tell them not to put the bread on it. Well, why are you eating French onion soup without the bread? But that's another story. But the idea is you have declared that you are going to control that aspect of what you put in your body for the purpose of gaining independence and freedom over how much you weigh. And you can do that. Today, you can choose to move more than you sit. You can choose to consume less than you burn. You can choose to take one less sip or pill or bag of whatever it is that's enslaving you. And you and, and that thing that's keeping you stuck in a place that you know you're not supposed to be. If you want to be free, you've got to declare it. It doesn't just happen by accident. You've got to decide. You've got to act. And you've got to press on through that decision even when it's hard. Whatever it is that's enslaving you, friend. Whatever it is that's keeping you from being free, you can declare your independence from it today. Remember Proverbs fifteen fifteen that we've been talking about. It says, for the despondent, every day brings trouble. But for the happy heart, life is a continual feast. Well, you get to decide. You get to decide how that's going to play out for you. You don't have to be despondent. But the path away from despondency 
And towards getting a happy heart is a decision. It's a declaration. Just like those guys on July 4th, 1776 said, we declare that we are going to be independent. We declare that we are going to be free. You get to decide that you're going to do that. But here's the thing. You will not find the tools to make that decision, to perform that self-brain surgery that will finally help you reach the place the founding fathers reached when they said, I won't live like this anymore. You will not find the tools by accident. You have to seek them out. You've got to go for it. You've got to make a decision and you've got to declare it. It's crucial. Remember, the declaration wasn't the end of the matter. In fact, I'm bringing this message on July 5th instead of July 4th because I wanted to make a point. The war didn't end on July 4th, 1776 when they declared their independence. It was just getting started, friend. Remember, they didn't wake up on July 5th and all of a sudden they were free and the British flags were all down and the British went back home to Britain. No. In fact, they had a war to fight that lasted another seven years. It didn't end until 1783 with the Paris Accords. When the founders put pen to paper and declared themselves free, they still had a lot of work to do. They had battles to fight. They had a war to win. And even when it was all over, it wasn't all over. Because the English weren't ready to quit yet in the War of 1812. They came back. They actually captured Washington, D.C. and burned it to the ground. Freedom isn't final unless you're willing to keep fighting for it. So the question today in this short episode is do you value your freedom enough to fight for it? Do you? Remember the Joseph Campbell quote from Diane K. Osborne that I shared last episode. It is by going down into the abyss that we recover the treasures of life. Where you stumble, there lies your treasure. The very cave you are afraid to enter turns out to be the source of what you're looking for. The thing in the cave that was so dreaded has become the center. You find the jewel and it draws you off. In loving the spiritual, you cannot despise the earthly. So here's the deal, friend. Here on July 5th. You go in that cave, you find the thing that scares you, you find the thing that you're really seeking when you indulge yourself with food or gambling or spending or sexual relationships or whatever. You find that thing that you're really de- that you're really afraid to deal with and so you're covering it up with these habits, with these mental states, with these relationships and you find that thing and you decide on this ground, ground of your choosing on the day of your choosing you're going to begin to fight that thing you pray for wisdom you seek wise counsel to root out the insecurity or the fear or the weakness that's leading you to stay stuck and you name that thing and there in that dark place you'll be able to shine a light on whatever it is and in facing that thing by naming it you will come to know it and in knowing it you can overcome it you can't beat it if you can't name it the Apostle Paul said in Galatians 5.1, it was for the sake of freedom that Christ set us free. It was so important to him that we live free, that he was willing to set us free with his own blood. Freedom is crucial because you can't be infinitely happier if you're constantly held back by the same old failures, traps, problems, disappointments, habits, and issues that keep you stuck, frustrated, ashamed, out of shape, addicted, and depressed. There's one more thing I want you to notice about the July 4th analogy. The people who declared their independence and signed that paper did not do it alone. It wasn't one guy signing a paper and telling Britain he was declaring independence. They would have just shot him. No, it took community. It took the power of a large group of people fighting for the same purpose. They pledged together that they were going to be free and they had to help each other. They had to be accountable. They had people praying for them. And guess what? So do you. Let's look at Hebrews 12, 1 through 4. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Fixing our eyes on Jesus the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. 
in your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. Listen, friend, you've got witnesses. You've got people who care about you. Now, if you're not a spiritual person, it's okay. You don't have to be. If you can't imagine that this long train of Christians that have gone before you are rooting for you in heaven, that they're pulling for you and, and witnessing for you, if you can't imagine that, which is a great a great thing to imagine. I, I like to think about my son and my grandpa and my mother-in-law and all these people who love me that have gone before me up there pulling for me. And when I make a mistake, they're like, oh, Dad, don't do that. Yeah, Dad, that was a good decision. I like to think about that. And that's what this great cloud of witnesses thing is, is all about. But if you can't imagine that, then at least imagine this. You've got a community here. The thousands of people that are listening to this podcast around the world want you to succeed. They want you to be free, and they are pulling for you. And if you can't imagine it in a bigger spiritual context, then just imagine Lee and Lisa Warren out here in Nebraska, and we're on your side. And I am certain that everybody else listening to this podcast today wants you, friend, to break free and be successful. If you need somebody to talk to, connect on social media, at Dr. Lee Warren on Instagram and Twitter. Lisa is at Lisa D. Warren on Instagram and Twitter. Connect with us. Send me an email. Sign up for my newsletter. Get connected to this community. Zoom with us. We're doing a Zoom this afternoon. Find a pastor, a mentor, a chaplain, a friend, somebody, a coworker, somebody you trust, and summon the courage to tell them that you are declaring your independence from something in your life that's holding you back and you need their help. If you want to be infinitely happier, friend, you've got to get free, and you don't do that isolated and alone. You do it in community. It is crucial. It is vital that you declare today that you are going to be free from that thing that is holding you back in your life. This is self-brain surgery. This is biblical. It is neuroscience, and it is good self-care, and this will help. The war didn't end on July 4th. It started. The war didn't end on July 4th. The declaration happened, and there was a long seven-year war after that to get them there where they were finally free. And So I'm not promising you that you can make this declaration and tomorrow you'll wake up and you won't be an alcoholic anymore or that you'll have money in the bank. I'm not making that promise. We dealt with theology last time. What I'm telling you is declaring your independence is the first step to being willing to fight for it. And in fighting for it, you will achieve it. God is on your side, and he will help you, and so will we. Again, this is so biblical, and it's so consistent with neuroscience, but you have to do one thing if you want to be free. You've got to declare it, and you have to start today. Hey, thanks for listening. Please subscribe to the show so you automatically get every episode. And if you like the show, you'll love my weekly letter. Check out my writing at drleewarren.substack.com, drleewarren.substack.com. Com. Get the free newsletter every week for my best prescriptions for becoming healthier, feeling better, and being happier through the power of faith and neuroscience smashing together via self-brain surgery. Dr. Lee Warren, .substack.com. And if you need prayer, go to the prayer wall at wleewarrenmd.com slash prayer. The theme music for the show is Make Us One by Tommy Walker, graciously provided for free by the great folks over at tommywalkerministries.org. Check it out and consider supporting them, tommywalkerministries.org. Remember, you can't change your life until you change your mind. And the good news is you can start today. I'm Dr. Lee Warren. I'll talk to you soon. God bless you, friend. Have a great day.